Well, good morning, Columbia United Church of Christ. Um, here it is on uh, Friday, April 3rd, and we are here for another chancel chat. Um, I'm coming to you not from the chancel, uh, but from my home office today. And um, today we are going to be sharing Psalm 71 together. So let's take a look at Psalm 71, shall we? It says, In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O my God, from the hands of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel. For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. Upon you I have leaned from my birth. It was you who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. I have been like a portent to many, but you are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all day long. Do not cast me off in my old age. Do not forsake me when my strength is spent. For my enemies speak concerning me, and those who watch for my life consult together. They say, Pursue and seize that person whom God has forsaken, for there is no one to deliver. O God, do not be far from me. O my God, let my, make, make, make haste to help me. Let my accusers be put to shame and consumed. Let those who seek to hurt me be covered with scorn and disgrace. But I will hope continually, and I will praise you yet more and more. My mouth will tell of your righteous acts, of your deeds of salvation all day long. Though their number is past my knowledge, I will come praising the mighty deeds of the Lord God. I will praise your righteousness, yours alone. O oh God, from my youth you have taught me, and still I proclaim your wondrous deeds. So even to old age and gray hairs, O oh God, do not forsake me, until I proclaim your might to all the generations to come. Your power and your righteousness, O oh God. Your power and your righteousness reach the high heavens. You who have done great things, O God, who is like you? You who have made me see many troubles and calamities will revive me again. From the depths of the earth you will bring me up. You will increase my honor and comfort me once again. I will also praise you with the harp for your faithfulness, O my God. I will sing praises to you with the lyre, O Holy One of Israel. My lips will shout for joy when I sing praises to you, my soul also which you have rescued. All day long my tongue will talk of your righteous help, for those who tried to do me harm have been put to shame and disgraced. <clears throat> so the psalmist here talks and states that he has been a portent to many. Being important to many is the focus of his identity as he lifts up in verse 7. As a portent to many, his mouth is filled with God's praise and with God's glory all day long. But what exactly is a portent? Well, a portent is defined as a sign or a warning that something, especially something momentous or calamitous, is likely to happen. A portent is an omen, a harbinger of something to come. This psalmist, prophetically speaking God's message throughout his life, has been labeled as a portent, and that has brought him great calamity. This is often the case when you are a prophet. When we speak of prophets in the Bible, many people conflate them with fortune tellers. There is a belief by many, even reinforced by some biblical authors, that prophets, especially Old Testament prophets, predicted the future. That's not true. They did not predict the future, they predicted what was to come. 
Now, I know that sounds like the same thing. They did not predict the future. They predicted what was to come. That sounds like the same thing, but it's not. <clears throat> Let me give you an example. If my mother saw me running with scissors, and she told me, if you run with scissors, you're going to get hurt, and then I ran with scissors and got hurt, would you say she's a fortune teller able to predict the future? Would you then ask her what the winning lottery numbers for next week would be? No, you would realize that her wisdom simply led her to be able to foretell what was to come. This is the case with these prophets whom we hear about in the Old Testament too. They were wise, they were able to see the outcome of the actions happening around them, but they weren't fortune tellers predicting the future. Often these prophets led a calamitous life. Ever faithful and ever true, they were willing and able to speak the truth to those in power, even when it was difficult or dangerous to do so. They spoke the truth, and they often paid the price for it. In our world today, it is difficult to find those who are speaking the truth. Most often, people are speaking for their own personal gain. They speak with partisan agendas or speak to enhance their own credibility, power, or fame, or sometimes they just speak because they like to hear themselves talk. This is just the opposite of our Old Testament prophets. Their speech is most likely to diminish their safety, to diminish their security or credibility, but they speak anyway because they know that their speech is for the good of the people and their speech is to God's greater glory. One moral arc that I have witnessed in my lifetime is speaking about recycling to help save the environment. When I was a young child, my family recycled, but we were one of the few families that did. My father was very interested in recycling and talked about it, but was sometimes berated by others for his practices. This was the case with others who spoke about recycling in the public arena. They were heckled as well, called extremists, and disenfranchised for their views. But today, recycling is part of our everyday life, and those who spoke prophetically of it and were denounced are now vindicated by our current cultural climate. One good thing that comes out of this time of social isolation is the healing of our planet taking place. For years, climate scientists have warned us about climate change and have been scoffed by others. We have been told that if we reduce our carbon emissions, we can reverse the course of the damage being done, but that science has been disenfranchised by those who are afraid of losing their perceived power. But today in our world, with carbon emissions cut drastically this past month or more, we already see healing taking place. Our planet is beginning to heal to a degree. When we emerge from this time of self-isolation, perhaps we can listen more closely to those who speak prophetically about climate change, because this crisis has certainly vindicated their prophetic message. This psalm today is a prayer for help, prayed as a way of seeking refuge with God. It is composed of repeated petitions interwoven with declarations of trust and descriptions of trouble. It begins with petitions for deliverance followed by declarations of trust. Although it is a prayer for help, the psalmist asserts their trust in God, so much trust that confidence in God's provision outweighs the psalmist's concern with trouble. They express their troubles, but they are confident in God's deliverance, in God's salvation. Do we have the confidence of the psalmist? Are we confident that God is with us even in the midst of our troubles? Do we realize that God is here even in the midst of global pandemic, making the most of our time and helping us through this suffering? God is with us, giving us strength. God is with us, giving us hope, as God ever has been. Let us pray. Creator God, as we hear the words of this psalmist speaking of trouble, but confidently speaking of their faith in you, 
We pray that we might be able to have this same expression of faith, that we might be confident in who you are and your presence with us, even in the midst of our troubles. And dear God, we praise those who speak prophetically in our world, who speak about the things that are, even when it, was dif it is difficult or dangerous to do so. And we pray that, like this psalmist, we might be able to speak prophetically in our world as well. Help us, dear God, in this time of social isol isolation and global pandemic. Help us to change our lives to be even more oriented towards you, that we might emerge from this a people basking in your salvation. We thank you, dear God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me for Chancel Chat. Um, tomorrow we are going to look at Psalm 72 and um, talk more then. So uh, don't forget, worship this Sunday. We'll be live streaming on the Columbia United Church of Christ website. So be sure to tune in at 1030 for that. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>